Welcome back to Shiftcast. We are on episode four. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. All right. We are covering uh, everything that has happened. Everything is happening now, and we got you covered for the future as well. First, we're going to start with NA Regional Recap. Uh, G2, back-to-back, -back, total domination over North America. Who's, uh, who's after G2? So, I want to start by saying that, you know, as we've referred, as we've referenced a couple times, the, the very first episode of this podcast, I said that Gen G was the best team by far. But I want to highlight something I said, which was that I thought they had the best player and the best system, and that's why they were going to be the best team. Yeah. And I was right on that count if you cut out who I was talking about. G2 <laughs> have the best player. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, right now, Atomic has played the best of any player in uh, North America. And okay. I think Beast Mode's right there with him. And I think Dan had an unbelievable, specifically the playoffs this, yeah. this time around. And they have the best system. I mean, I, that's not coming from me. That's coming from you know someone who many people consider the greatest coach of all time. Last uh, last regional, I was I was hanging out in Johnny Boy's stream, and uh, they were watching OG play M80, and Farah popped in, you know the Farah, and said the. that he liked OG because yeah, with two E's, um, <laughs> that that they liked he he liked OG, and he said they have the best game plan in the region besides G2. So not only are they lapping the competition and the talent department. The best minds in the game are kind of in agreement that Sathu has cooked up the best game plan. Um, and I think in any sport, esport, whatever, if you have the best player and you have the best system, it is incredibly, incredibly hard to beat them even once, let alone multiple times. So I think for now, until one of the, until a team can get can have a player that's the best player or have a system that's better than theirs, I can't see any team beating them. And just to be clear, you're saying the best player is Atomic. I think right now, I think the most talented player on the roster is Beast Mode, but I think the player playing best right now is Atomic. I okay, think he's been the driving force. I don't think I was gauging opinions in the Raid My Take channel in Shift Court, and people were heavily upvoting the take that said that Beast Mode is right now the best player in NA. I think this right here is the problem, though, is it could be any of them. They're all so yeah. incredible. And, I guess. And I, I guess. don't want to say it's a full rebuttal, but like, Michael, e even if. First killer starts performing better than the other three. I don't. I mean, it's I we're think at they the point now where point. you've got to have a full squad. You can't just yeah. have one superstar. You can't even just have two superstars. You've got to be all the way across the board, top tier talent. And I think there's no better example than looking at Europe. Those four teams at the very top are solid across the board. There is no. Yeah. And I don't even want to say weak link because that's not. That's not even what these players are, but they're just all hmm. S tier talent. And when you have yeah. a full team of S tier talent, it's going to be. I mean, you you have you've got to catch them on an off day, and you have to be at your absolute peak to beat those kinds of teams. And I think that's what G2 is putting on display in NA right now because they're just not having any troubles with anyone. I think so. What I meant was like I think if First Killer shows up and he's like rogue First Killer for an hour, <sighs> that's different. They could. They could, they could, yeah, or even like winter phase first killer where he's just everywhere. He's causing, it's like they could get a series. Maybe G2's yeah, not playing yeah. that well. They can get a 4 2, 4 3. But yeah. that, and I think if there's a team with a better system, like you've seen LG give them a lot of issues, sure. maybe on the right day, if they don't choke a 3 1 game lead for no reason, like they, they could get him. But I don't think that there's going to be a team in North America that constantly beats yeah. them yeah. because. Yeah. You know, having a peaking player, having a really good game plan can get you once, but those players can go That's back. Right. The players on G2 with Sath, you can go back, restrat, and then cook you the next time. Well, well I think let's... G2 right now is the biggest drive behind the whole EUNA debate there because they're actually it's just showing. Yeah, it, just I mean, it's just them, but also they're showing such good Rocket League out mm -hmm. of their region that we want to see them play up, play against the French. So there's the question. Can they compete with those top four? Obviously, we, ha we have to wait and see in Copenhagen, but how do you guys feel about it? Do you I know that NA may not be as strong as Europe across the board. Um, there are different opinions on that, but even if that, are, uh, even if that is accepted as true, um, G2 has looked very confident, very comfortable. Do you think that they are, first, capable of playing at the same level as European teams, and then secondarily, um, do you think that they will uh, compete with those top four when, when the major comes? Here comes my EU bias. Uh -oh. Yes. Oh. Yes, they can. Um, yeah. But that's yeah. It's a G two is just good. I mean, yeah, it's, it's simple as that. Mm -hmm. The word you used is important. Compete. 
I'm not going to sit yeah, here sure, and say yeah, that G2 yeah. is going is exactly. going to beat. That's right. The it's just going to show up, wax everybody, maybe right. lose to K Corp. Yeah, the question was, can they compete? Absolutely. Yeah. We saw <laughs> last year North American teams go to the World Championship and look completely outclassed by the European teams. I don't think there's a team in the world that will look just like sure. they are on a different plane than G2. I think just because there's so like there's six, seven teams that I think are all in the same bunch up top. Um, and I think, you know, when that quarterfinal gate day comes and if G2 is in there, they could be matched up with a, a Furia Falcons, one yep. of the four teams. I don't think there's going to be a team that just like shows up and you're like, yeah, they, G2 just can't play sure. with these guys. I do. I do think that this right now, NA reminds me a lot of, uh, you know, Mina back in the day when they had the Falcons, where it was like, you know, you were excited about some stuff, but there was just a team that looked so much better. And there is precedent with both Furia and Falcons in the 21, 22 seasons where they were just dominating their, yeah. their field that the confidence and the play style that you get into where you're not afraid to challenge That's and you right. feel like you can get to anything you want can really can translate over really well to land where some of the teams that are more used to playing in a, a more competitive region are maybe, you know, in the habit of not doing some of the things that a team that is just able to out talent the other teams in their region are able to do. I, I like the comparison with Team Falcons because they showed up to an international LAN and proved that they weren't just beating uh, the, the teams in their own region, but they really could compete on the international stage. And that's what I want to see from G2, of course, as well. Um, oh, yeah. Well, not I mean, much longer. Not much longer. Yeah, we'll, I mean, uh... It's always kind of my fear that if a team is at the top for too long, they're not challenged so much that they're maybe slacking a little bit, even if they don't notice, if, even if they're still, you know, giving it their all, they might not be challenged enough oh, yeah. to really improve their play like people in a in a region do where there's more challenge to be had. Um, but I feel like G2 is in a good position now. They're they're at the top of their game. They still have one regional to play. I, I made a silly tweet um, saying that they should now move to NA uh, because they're already clinched for the major. It's not for the... Uh, for, uh, to NA, yeah, yeah. They should, they should go boot camp in Europe um, because they're already clinched um, for a spot at Copenhagen, not for the top seed. So it would still be a risk. They could still lose some points in the in the third over qualifier for NA, but they're allowed to play it from Europe. So they could just go scrim the, the French teams. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. just go over a month early. I'm not so sure. But it's an exciting I'm not so sure idea. Win. Yeah. I'm not so sure they wouldn't win from EU ping. I'm going to be honest, the way it looks. Teams they just, they, might, rock league against them, they right? might put up a good fight as well, yeah. All right, well, I can't contain my excitement anymore. I get to gloat. Hey. OG, silence the doubters. They bounce back and they there go top go. four. You love to see it. Um, you know, on a serious note, those players, I think I think we all knew that they were better than that 0-3 performance that we saw in the first event, but it was scary. They started very similar in this Swiss, right? They lost 1-3 to Gen G, and then they fell again, and then they turned things around. They got that confidence going. J Naps turned it on. That man was playing incredible Rocket League, and they people. bounce back. They're back in the top four, and they're in the running for this major, uh, these final couple spots there for NA. They're still in the running for yeah. that major, along with, you know, seven, eight, nine other teams, but um, they're right there in it. Yeah, no, listen, he's eternal. He's just <laughs> eternal. You know, yeah. if there's one thing about us, you know, us Canadians, we're quiet, we're polite, and we don't quit, okay? Um, you know, I think JNAPs, I would love, genuinely, if there's anything I would love to see out of a pro, I would love like a liturgy, like one of those like master class classes from JNAPs on how to stay so good for so long. I mean, think about, does he have, are there, are there anyone else at his, of his like kind of the, 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 the era that he came in with that are still even close to the level that he's on? And I'm not trying to take away from Common Nolly. They played really well, but it's like yeah, he had 11 goals in that quarterfinal. I mean, like I think there's really only like one other player that even exists from that era with it, with Garrett. I mean, you, you've still got a couple others bucking around that are still competing, but they're not having anywhere near that success. And and all due respect, I don't think Garrett and NRG are right now either. So yeah, Jane Apps, um, yeah, just doesn't a legend, bro. Looking at the stats, uh, Shift tweeted about it earlier, saying, OG fans, if you're hoping for a win, you need JNAPS yeah. to stay hot. Because every time he po 
places uh, an average above one, so an above average performance in a series, they're winning that series. He needs to step up, and then they can really win a lot of against a lot of teams. That makes me also doubt sure. if they can make it very far as a team, because like you said earlier, That's right. you need all those three pieces to be top tier to actually, you know, make it really far in Rocket League right now. So if Jnaps doesn't have a great day and he's performing a little bit above, uh, below his average, OG will struggle again. Yeah. I I like them to I like them to make the major to be honest with you I think like yeah. I mean I, I of it. course it's easy to just parrot what you know Farah says but I think when you watch them they their kickoffs are better than anyone else in North America yeah, which is yeah. you know, that's free goals mm -hmm. and uh, I think they play a real like they they have done a good job at making up what they don't have an individual mechanical skill yeah with their game plan yep and I think they did a really good job this event specifically when they started winning with playing to their team's individual strengths, which was mostly, JNAPs, you are the best at shooting the ball in the net maybe ever, so you should do that more often. <laughs> it felt like they were generating more and more chances for him, and he was capitalizing. Um, I think Nolly was playing really well. I think Calm got back to sort of the first Manny stuff that he's done, and they let him kind of work a little more uh, than he was on B1, obviously. Um, so, I mean, I look at the teams. Dig did not inspire me this regional um, I think LG will make it because they made those two top four, top two. I think OG over time will be better than them, even though shout out to Cheese. Unbelievable performance from yeah. Cheese this weekend. Oh, yeah. Um, and then it's going to come down to can can M80, you know, figure things out on Saturday and, and you know, can Cheese drop the masterpiece to get the Pirates to think? Because I, I don't really believe in SSG either. So I, I like OG to make the major. I think, I think Hootie motivated them. No faith in the uh, in the space station squad. I think space station. will we'll, I don't want to go too long on this, but I think they're being we'll a little bit underrated. That. They've had a couple of unlucky draws there, finding in uh, Gen G in the quarterfinals. Um, so I'm holding on to hope for them. And we haven't. I mean, maybe this is just because they fell out and missed event too. But we didn't even mention the rebels, bro. Arm the rebels. I thought you were. What's going on, Michael? You're just down and out on them. I've. They're, they've made an enemy out of me. Making me look like a fool. They made, a, they made an enemy out of me, man. I don't want to talk about the Rebels. You know what? I'm, I'm, they, I think they bounce back. That's what I think. I think that is a talented squad. Back, not, I think they, they, they bounce think they back. And I think, I think they go top four in this event. I think they go top four. Ooh. I like mm, it. I like that. Well, someone's I mean, got someone's to carry the flag because it won't be me anymore. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> No they obviously there. underperformed, so yeah. if they go back to what's more standard performance for them, obviously they can they can make it quite far. Top four, I don't know. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's up in the air. I, like it. I think you could say the same for LG, OG. And yeah, Pirates, that's the thing. There's Dig. so many teams in that. Yeah, they're all there. Also, and, just... and here's what's crazy is like we're looking at this and all, like. It's the ripple effect, butterfly effect. Like, mm. if any of these teams drop in quals, yeah. like, we're seeing Su with the one yeah. seed for this upcoming EU event, right? And then we see Casey <laughs> and Gentlemates starting Swiss against each other. Yeah. And listen, Swiss is a format where you can, even if you lose early, you can bounce back and you're fine. But those have implications even in the, in the single elim bracket, right? So, like, mm -hmm. this begins this coming Friday, and these teams need to be on their A game sweeping as many series as they can, building that confidence, building that momentum. Um, and it's going to be tough because they're all in the running, right? Like, like they're, they're, they've all got a chance. So many of them. That, that pressure is going to be on. Uh, but let's take a look at some of the uh, newer talent. The Shift Next Up report. We've got some more Next Up players making their debut in RLCS 2024. We've got Cam and Daunt. Both players on Leftovers had their first performance. And... They actually got a win in the Swiss stage. A lot of times, teams, when they first make it in, they kind of go that 0-3. You know, maybe as expected, the level obviously uh, increases when you get into that main event. But they did grab themselves a win. Um, pretty good first performance there for that squad. Yeah, they swept the G Buffo, which is another team that I think you can put down there. You know, they went 0-3. So, yeah. uh, of course, they could have done a little bit better maybe. But the other... Teams they went up against were G2, Dignitas, Luminosity Gaming, and yeah, that's that's a, a tough a tough record. But that's what happens in Swiss, you know. 
Um, it's still good to see them in that top 16, oh, yeah. Cam and Daunt. Um, and then, of course, we have five up uh, on, uh, East. on yeah. the Pirates on the boat. And he's just, he's just continuing to be up there. Him and Harris a... are ballers. I yeah. love that team yeah, concoction yeah. as well. Obviously, Achieves, we've got to give him credit, a, a fantastic mind. Uh, but Andy, I mean, that guy is incredibly consistent. It feels like he is always in the mix. He's never going to be, and I, don't, I, don't, I shouldn't say never, but he has not been in that S-tier conversation with the likes of FKs and Daniels and Beast Modes, Atomics. But it just feels like whenever you, he, he kind of reminds me of Nolly in the sense that you throw him on a team, and if, they're, like, if there's some good pieces around him, it feels like he elevates their game a bit. And, and I feel like that could probably be some maturity, the leadership, the willingness to play a role that may not be the most glamorized kind of role. Uh, but Andy's a consistent one, and I'm, I'm really excited to see that team getting some success. I do want to highlight and tell me what you guys think about this. We had our first full CRL squad qualify into RLCS University of Akron. Yeah, that was Thoughts really cool on that? See. It was cool. I think it shows that, uh, you know, a team that's together, that's been together, uh, that can at times be, because, I mean, Tristan's been around for a while. Mm -hmm. Real ones remember yeah. when Tristan was called the Justin of CRL. That's right. I remember when that was <laughs> Um, and, and it's cool to see that, you know, despite maybe a perceived lack of ability or talent that, you know, to this day, playing as a team, getting reps, scrimming, enjoying being around with your teammates, all that stuff can really lend towards the confidence and the mindset of being a rocket league team. And there was a lot of CRL representation yeah. just across the regional. Um, I mean, we talked about Cam and cool Dawn. Both of them are CRL yeah. guys. And I wanted a special shout out to Cam. You know, I have been watching that guy lose to pros and rank two's YouTube videos for what seems like my whole life. So it's awesome to see him finally make it because he's been grinding for so long and he's really, really wanted it. You can tell. So awesome to see. Awesome to see. Shout out to Cam. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm just gonna bring it back real quick. I think Five Up is gonna end up being the best uh, North American potentially next up player because he okay. just looks so comfortable out there mm -hmm. and right now it seems like tsm are struggling a bit i think the preseason favorite for like top na rookie was wavy but i mean five up has just looked like he he's a vet like he plays like he's been in the rlcs for years and i really really love watching him and yet i like that he's not immediately on a team like space station or mm -hmm. in, in pirates on the boat i think is the perfect place for someone like five up to to really start out in RLCS because he has Andy and Aris, oh, which are good talents, but there's not the pressure of that top team yeah. on his shoulders. And he can actually show in his at his own pace with Achieves and the entire team what he can bring to the RLCS. Whereas we have seen really, you know, promising talents come into the RLCS being picked up by big names and kind of falling short of the high and high expectations. So I really like Pirates on the Boat as the place for Five Up to make this move into these brackets. Oh, yeah. Super exciting. I love that. Pirates on a Boat, uh, keep it rolling. And, and all of the next up, um, folks, keep doing your thing. This is the season of upcoming talent. Uh, it's, it's, at least 100%. it feels that way in NA. Uh, I think this open bracket is oh, yeah. definitely w with the, the combination of complexity, Furia heading uh, back to South America, and then this open format just busted things wide open and, and players are taking advantage of it. So you love to see that. Well, just for the EU uh, qualifiers that we had this weekend for the top 16, we only have one new yeah. debutant. So, yeah, NA is really the region right now where we see all these prospects coming in. So that's yeah. really exciting. It is exciting. And you know, we talked about it. If you're an NA fan, just hold on to hope. It's coming. The time <laughs> exactly. is coming. Just be I'll patient. I'll see you when I believe it. I'll <laughs> see you when I believe it. Well, we talked about Furia and Complexity jumping over to Sam. So let's go ahead and follow those guys. Um, this time, Furia takes the W and Complexity actually finished in that 3-4 spot. Um what do you guys make of this? I want to give a quick shout to W7M with a big bounce back. I think they got knocked out in uh, round five of Swiss last time and showed a little they bit stronger so performance much this time. Um, in, in yeah, I was going to mention them too. They, they were so much better. Of course, they had Diaz who really showed up in that 1v1 record, right, on the salt mine. And now he's in the 3v3 and he had to prove 
that he belongs there didn't really work out in the first regional, but he's so much better. And his team around him, uh, Realis as well, really making that team work. It's, it's really good to see. Yeah, and I mean, we can get back to Fury, but since we're on the topic of sort of young, insane South American talent, shout out to uh, Swift, my boy making the final. You know, obviously he didn't have to face the, one of the big two in the bracket, but listen, you got to beat who's in front of you. Oh, yeah. And uh, Nip looked a little shaky early on in the first regional, but they've shaken back and they've made that final. I think that's more of what they envisioned at the beginning of the season. And I think Swift's showing with every series, like why he is, you know, sort of the quote unquote Daniel of uh, Sam, where he's been he's been talked about for so long. You know, minute he was available, he was picked up. Um, and and that that Nip team, while they do definitely not look on maybe on the level of the top two in Sam. Um, they're building something really nice over there. Astromic, I mean, you know that guy's going to find talent and he's going to mold it into, you know, really, really good 3v3 gameplay. So it's awesome to see that. And, uh, you know, Sam having two of these prospects where the, you're, you get really eyes on them, I think it's good for the region. I think it makes people want to watch stuff outside of maybe finals. Um, and I think it's really exciting for the future where, you know, there's some regions that you feel like they have sort of like a, an up and a down and then they're kind of bad for a while. But this, this, it feels like there's a real pipeline now in South America. Yeah, I mean, I think we said it in the first episode of this shift cast, how interesting South America is going to be this season. And they've delivered on all fronts. It's such an interesting region to watch because, yes, exactly, you have those grand finals, which is always interesting, of course, because you want to see who wins. But there's so many other matches that really bring a lot of excitement out of the region. So... Those guys at Rocket Street Live, Twitch.tv slash Rocket Street Live, they're doing a great job covering it all. And I mean, you have to check it out because that's where some of the most beautiful Rocket League is being played right now. Well, let's take this time to do a bit more gloating. This time, we got to throw it over to Yins, who shout out yep. Gamer Legion for their bounce back. They go top eight this time and they take W7M to game seven. Not only that, uh, y'all, let me know if I'm right or wrong here, but Pan, Gamer Legion, right? Hit yep. the first Craziest in main shot, event, man. Wow. Psycho. And that was an incredible clip. Um, Not just the Psycho, such a clean one as very well. Very clean. <laughs> oh. Oh, it was, it so, was good. so nice. But, I mean, you just summed it up perfect, Gens. Like, it's South America's not just for the grand finals. Like, mm-hmm. as soon as you, and, and, and Swiss is exciting too, but as soon as you're into that bracket, you've got Complexity Team Secret in Game 7. Yeah. That's quarterfinal. You've got W7M versus Gamer Legion. In Game 7, you've got W7M versus NIP going to Game 6 in the, uh, the semifinal. I mean, it's great Rocket League across the board. So much talent there. Just, if you are not a fan of Sam, you've got to give it a chance. Maybe catch it on VOD if you can't see it live. Great Rocket League there. Keep your eyes on it because Michael mentioned it um, when he said NIP may not be in that top two. But I'm going to tell you, I looked at rankings today um, on my stream. Just look at the major race. It's open in Sam. It can go any way. Mm. There's four or five different teams right there that if they have this, um, if they have a pop off in this final event, they can grab one of those two spots for the first major. Yeah. Speaking of which, one of the teams that have left the door open. Oh no. Crew. Oh right? yeah. Which we were all kind of rooting for as yep. a, as a unit, um, considering they're sort of like the quote unquote leftovers, even though they're all great players. So I hate calling them great players leftovers. Um, and they didn't make it out of the the Swiss. They lost the game of Legion three two. Um, which was kind of the big, I guess, story was that, you know, a team full of established players losing to an up and coming team. But uh, I, so I kind of want to throw the question over to you, Hoodie, for once. Uh, do you think that this crew team that was a blip or are the rest of Sam catching up to sort of the old guard of elite talent in, uh, in Sam? This is my classic stance, but I'm going to sit halfway. A little of both. Nice. I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I <laughs> just perch centrist. on the fence. I'm always there. It's a little of both. I mean, we're talking about it. There's so much talent in the in the region, you know. And we're talked to, we've talked about um, that higher tier of it. But I, I, I mean, when you have that higher tier setting an example and and um, you know inspiring upcoming talent. I mean, how many European players have talked about KDOP and Turbo and the success of all those teams and inspiring them. Um, mm-hmm. To, to grind and whatnot, I think you're probably going to see similar stuff here for the SAM talent, you know, whether it's that top eight level team or, or beneath. So I do think that, um, I do think that there are, 
you know, that is an upset. That's an upset. I think crew should be in the top eight. I think you're right as far as like a, a, a crew can, if they can clean up, I think they could be a major team next split. Um, I was really impressed with Bims when he kind of burst onto the scene in the past couple years. And AJG, I think, is just chronically Both underrated, last. like forever, you know? I don't really know why, but he's a fantastic player. And, you know, King Car, you know, how can you doubt him? But, um, yeah, I mean, thrown, though. Th th yeah. there's a... There's a wave. In the, when we've hit this open circuit, I think we all can see it. There is a ton of flourishing upcoming talent. You broke down those walls. There's no longer that league of RLCS, which was effectively a, a way to, and that's not what it meant to do, but it kept talent out, right? Like the, there was, it was harder to get up to that level. You had to go through six months of RLRS, and then provided you succeeded there, then you had to qualify by beating in that promotion relegation, and then you finally in that RLCS. And it, a lot of times it takes upcoming talent a season to kind of get their foothold and everything so yeah. this has broken down all those barriers and and i think we have seen over the past three years talent just explode into the scene because there's so many players that are so capable mechanically and then they start getting those reps and they start playing players like ajg and card and they start to understand the game a little more and they're going to take some series here and there we know that rocket league is a it's a crazy game you know just because a team is rated higher and consistently performs better doesn't mean that they're guaranteed that w right we saw it in round one of swiss for eu half the freaking top five seeds lost in, in round one so yeah um a little of both i think is my answer and and y'all will y'all will find out as we continue to go on this I, i'm a heavy fence sitter i like <laughs> I, I like to uh okay, everyone needs every every we all need <laughs> you know a flip-flopper in our lives that's right keep us honest i think but they, the thing um, is I, it's not the fun answer but a lot of times i think that's where it lies it's you know, the right it's a little one. of both yeah it so. is the right one yeah well um, it's not just swift as an exciting new player so you have alpe i don't know how long he's been around i i feel like i've seen his name around forever but on malados they went 3-1 through swiss stage so really impressive there as well and basically, that's the spot that crew could have taken, but they yeah. didn't. So, yeah, you have all kinds of new players coming up. And just to highlight one more time, going, we got Swift and yeah. Diaz um, that were both on the Next Step report. Uh, they're both top four in this event. And we've said it a lot, but South America, the talent is heating up. And, and I, I tell you what, I'm excited to see whoever they send. I'm excited to see those guys compete on the international stage versus the best, uh, the best around the world. But on the other side, I'm curious to see if Furia can now really build mm. their lead as well, because they came in a little bit slow. We, yeah. They weren't expected to lose against Complexity in the first uh, event, but now they've really shown up. They've beaten Complexity twice th this la past event. And I think one of the casters on Rock Street broadcast said it as well that Yanks has become much more of a team player than he used to be in previous seasons. Okay. And that is a great contribution to Furia as a team. And it shows. I think it really shows in their play. Great that for the is, team. Um, that's scary. Because yeah. it feels I like mean, that's... He, he goes for less individual yeah. outplays, which we're used to from Yanks. Sure. But as a team player, if he can mm -hmm. mold into a player that can benefit Furia as a whole, I mean, and, that and, is scary indeed. And I, I think that this is, you know, we talked a little bit earlier um, during the NA recap about how teams really need to have a full squad. It feels like this Furia team is, you know, there's no glue. Yeah. There's no, like, they are all S-tier talent. Um, so we'll, we'll see what they got as we roll into the main event. You talk about one team building their lead. Let's roll over to uh, Mina. I almost said Falcons. That's not the region. It feels like the region, though, I mean, doesn't it? They just, maybe, um, yeah. I mean, they are rocking and rolling. They have two back-to-back -back championships, taking down Rule 1 in the finals both times. But uh, we got to give credit to Rule 1. They took it to Game 7 this time. So let me just pose a question. Do you think better. that Rule 1 is chipping away in this third event? They're finally going to take it? Or do you think Falcons go 3-for-3? Three three? Um, I think that there's a chance because just like Falcons are, they punch their ticket, they'll get a top. Sure. I yeah, think if yeah. they get like top four that they're, that right. they're, they're locked into the one seed just because they'll be, they're six points or eight points up on Rule 1 right now. So I think if, yeah, I think it'll be, so maybe like they just kind of, you know, natural complacency. Yeah, let the foot off in. the gas. But do I think that they're, that Rule 1 would beat Falcons if they were trying their very hardest? Not a chance. Mm -hmm. um, they're just a better team. I think Nupo might be the best player in the region, but I think that if you did a list, it's like he might be number one, he might not, and then for sure the next three are all on Falcons. So it's hard for me. It's kind of like G2 Gen G with like yeah. first killer where it's yeah. like, 
well, yeah, he has the pop off potential. He has the peak potential. That might only happen once, and you'd have to catch them on a bad day. And if it happens, then they're going to like lab until that doesn't happen again for a long time. So I think for now, um, the Falcons just. I think that the Falcons right now look the best that any MENA team has ever looked, including mm-hmm. the Falcons team that made the major final. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just they they have a they've cut out some of the net sitting tendencies that MENA teams get, and I, I got to see it because they they net sit more on land than they do in, online. But they've cut out some of the net sitting teams, uh, s- sorry, net sitting habits that they had, which is great. Um, but yeah, as of now, I, I have them in a similar tier to G two, where it's like I am fully ready to like crown them as one of the best teams in the world. I just want to wait to the major to like watch them play sure. the other best team. Sure. I mean, what you said about rule one maybe catching them on a bad day, I think that's what happened. I think that's mm-hmm. why they went to game seven. Gotcha. I think Team Falcons is so strong that even if they have a an off day or they don't show up immediately strong at, in in the se- in the series, they still win. So yeah, I don't see them losing the next uh, event as well. And do we all feel that um, the second representative for Mina will most likely be fou- uh, excuse me rule one? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that there's some teams that are good in in Mina. I think the Falcons being so good is underplaying like fearless who almost beat rule one and twisted minds you know they they kind of got their revenge on infinity but those teams can't seem to get past the rule one rule one who can't get by by falcon it's like right. you know you got to beat like the first form of the boss before like yeah. the final final the form of the final boss and they can't <laughs> even get past the first form of the boss right. so yeah we got to we got to go back and grind some xp first yeah all right mina Going to uh, going according to plan. Well, let's jump over to OCE because we do have Power going back to back, clinching their spot at the major. But we also have Chiefs, the regain. So back. They're so back. I mean, <laughs> the fun. I if if you don't know, their Swiss run is the yeah. funniest Swiss run ever. I was they had what, to bring two that up. forfeits. They went three two and they had two forfeit wins. They only they won top. one series, and they went for the Swiss. Top two only in the, in the regional. And their what two losses great... are to uh, Ground Zero and Pioneers. Yeah, so they're not there yet. Okay, Th- that's well, it's be, to say. Yeah. A slight regain then. I guess. Listen, I guess. <laughs> be who's in front of you, even if they don't show up. Even if they're not there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, listen. No, we'll give them credit. I, yeah. We'll give them credit. We go to Bracket. They beat yeah. Pioneers in seven, and then they beat Gremlins 4-0. Now, yeah. they did get smacked in the finals versus Power 4 And it was bad. It was bad. Was it bad? Watching CJ, CJ, and, and, and cast that at yeah. 2.30 in the morning was <laughs> one of the most brutal. Like, I've made, I, I told you guys a couple weeks ago, I've made it almost a habit to come home from when I go out and just watch OC because it's so funny. It's, like, yeah. the best thing I can watch while having, like, my Thai food or whatever. And, uh, yeah, CJ, CJ was just, like, every game. Like, this is the time that we don't get, we don't make a stupid mistake and lose. And it never <laughs> happened. <laughs> I, so I have to good. admit I didn't wake up at 7 or 6.30 or whatever to go watch it um, but I mean it's a, it's a region where again we see one team really above yeah. the rest yep. towering yep. above the rest with power well I mean Banana Head is incredible. I mean, so it seems like that's a trend kind of around the board and, and it follows that long off season I think we've got to just recognize that these teams and these players consolidated talent and some of them struck gold. You know, Power's got this, yeah. this chokehold on the region. Mina, yeah. um, Falcons have this chokehold on the region. I think Furia, incredible stuff. Complexity, maybe not the greatest roster move ever, uh, but certainly a strong... I mean, Dorito played really well as yeah. regional. Yeah. So he's a newcomer. He's maybe the, the least known factor within that team, mm-hmm. but he might have been the best player on the team in the last event. And then even in North America and Europe, I mean, you've got G2 who do, who has um, shown the most prowess, but I think Gen G is still in that top two there. And, you know, Europe is the French four powerhouse. Um, and, yeah. and all of these teams that we're rattling off have been big roster changes, and they roll into this season and just absolutely tear, you know, tear up um, their own respective regions. So I guess... It feels you know, like with a longer offseason, those teams kind of get to figure out what 
a super team would look like, yeah. and then they get to build that super team, and then they get to bring it to the RLCS. Yep. Whereas maybe with a shorter off season, they don't really get through all these steps and kind of still figure it out while the season is already underway. Well, let's um, let's talk about a region that maybe is not going that way. We had APEC. They did build their team. I think we saw some talent consolidation with Virtuoso Realize teaming up with Max U, but they certainly have not had a chokehold on that region. In fact, they lost the first event to a rookie, Sphinx, uh, on their old team, Elevate. But they have bounced back here in, uh, in Regional 2. They did take the W, and funny enough, Elevate finished fourth, so those two teams have the exact same amount of points. Um, and really, it looks like it's going to come down to whoever finishes higher in this uh, third event. That's yeah, a lot to no. play for. Mm. Yeah, I think well, the biggest thing is that the emergence of this uh, NA team, or two-thirds NA team, LA Signal, decided to come through and make a final. Mm -hmm. um, which is, I mean, they didn't play... I mean, I believe that L Elevate only lost to, and I might have to double check this, but I believe they only they lost to Gladiators and Swiss, and they lost to them in the, um, in the bracket. So they they still haven't been beaten by anybody but but the Gladiators, I believe. That's true. Um, and so I think what's interesting now is that you have this two team dynamic, but this third team that didn't play the first regional, so can't really make yeah land is now here and seems to have be immediately one of the better teams in the region. So I'm interested. I think we almost have a little bit of like a limitless versus EU thing going on where it's like, now I'm not, not just trying to make land. Now I got to make sure these guys don't steal the land from me, right? Lunar and stealth, I think are playing for North America. Um, so it'll, it'll be, it'll be really interesting. I, I still got my money on gladiators, but um, I would love to see Elevate make it through as sort of a, a, a shot, like one of the only surprises I feel like from the smaller regions yeah. in this first split. And I do, I do want to take a moment to kind of outline the scenario that you are talking about. And, and let me make this very clear. Once again, um, these players that are pursuing opportunities, they're doing what, like this is allowed. Everything, it, they're, they're following the rules. Psyonix has outlined things to operate in this manner. So no one is breaking rules. But we are also seeing, um, you know, some of the concerns that people had voiced come to fruition almost immediately. So we've got a team, um, or, or let's just start like this. We've got a, 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 an NA player that has bounced around the bubble for a while. He started by subbing for Elevate in APAC. That was for event one. Um, Y'all help me if I mess up here too. Second event, he joins alongside two um, individuals to play in that region. Furlash, who is an American, but he's living there. He lives there. He lives in. Yeah. in he lives in the APAC region. And then y'all help me with how to say this. Nye? Is it Nay? I think. And he's also an American. So Nye. Yeah. Nay. He he's also American. Nay is not right. Oh. Is I it, thought he was. Is it not Nye? Nye? I don't know how to say it. It might be. I, I don't I, say it though. <laughs> oh no. Um, I, Oopsies. All, all knowledge being tested. Oh, right he now. is. Hold he on. is an American. Okay. Is he living there or? He lives in. He lives in APAC as well. Okay. So, um, two players that are actually American, but they are uh, like native or, or living to that region, I guess. I'm not sure which how to say that, but mm -hmm. um, now they have gone on and Precedence. made another change. Michael did just cover this. They finished top two. So you had LA Signal, didn't exist for event one. They did exist for event two. They made second. And now they've made another roster change. They're bringing another player from NA, a player named Stealth, who's had some success here and there, played with players like Knight. Yeah, low, low main event player, yeah. Yeah, low main event player. Um, and so now you've got two bubble area low main event players from North America playing on that signal team alongside Furlash, another American that is uh, living over there. And so, um, you know, this is just, again, another example of there are no restrictions regarding where you sign up to play, um, no matter where you live. And so some of the players are exercising their right to do so. And, you know, Michael alluded to it, but that team... While they may not be able to qualify for the major, they certainly will have an impact on which of the two teams does qualify spoiler, for the for major, sure. right? Like they could be the one that eliminates Elevate or Gladiators before finals. Yep. Yeah, they they can play spoiler, and that's you know kind of a scary thought. But I think that both these teams, Elevate and Gladiators, are really confident in themselves. 
I don't think they're going to be sweating over this. I think they probably welcome some more talent coming in. Okay. Um, I don't know. I did see when I was looking at Lunar's page that it looks like they're looking to scrim NA teams uh, on West Ping. So I don't know if we'll get any practice against them, but that could be a good thing, right? Um, so it'll be really interesting to see this sort of wrench thrown into this, what we thought was a two-team race. Now there's yeah. a team that, despite probably, I think they still could make land, but it would be like Elevate and, um, it would have to, I, Elevate and Gladiators would both have to go out like top nine. So that's not happening. Um, I, I thought they so were yeah, forfeit I think points for changing the roster during the split. I think, I th- I, oh, you're right. So yeah, no chance, but um, it'll be interesting to see how they handle the yeah. new challenger. Yeah, Absolutely. that's uh, LHS, as I like to call them, because I don't think that's an A in their logo. But uh, <laughs> we, of course, we, we see that team there in APAC, but it's much more prevalent in SSA, yeah. um, which we'll get to. And of course, like you said, I generally agree with the sentiments that uh, hate the rules, don't hate the players. That's right. Um, that's the thing here. Um, I do want to say about that, mostly towards SSA, um, that even though I get that it will always be controversial and that there will always be haters for those teams coming in and invading another region, um, there is something to say for being a little bit more respectful to the people who have played in that region because they live there for their entire careers and lives and whatever there, there's a little bit more to say about respect in I, that regard yeah i couldn't agree more. that's more I think towards if, the ssa region yeah well i think it is it's definitely fair i mean it's a it's a gray line that i think a lot of people are upset about um i just you know i just want to make sure that we are careful to um make sure we're not encouraging sure. anyone to be hateful or anything like that but you're right i mean you need to be respectful of the folks that have laid the foundation for that um that's for right. that region and and I think, you know, my personal opinion is if you're going to play somewhere, I think you should invest in that ecosystem, right? I think you should be scrimming those teams. I think you should be queuing that server for ranked. I think you need to be investing sure. in that place that you are. I mean, look, we're taking from it. We need to be putting back into it. So, um, yeah. you know, that is my own personal totally opinion. Agree. And obviously I'm not a player, so I'm not in this position. But I, I, I here's it's what I want to say regarding pick. all of it. I, I think w- whether you're on one side of the fence or the other, let's just make sure that none of us are hating Okay, let's not be too crazy. You can express your opinion in a way that is critical, but also respectful at the same time. So just remember, these are all, you know, 20 and under uh, kids, frankly. So let's keep that in mind as we discuss all this stuff. Let's jump to SSA, though, because while they have been threatened by invaders, (laughs) they have held them off. Limitless, once again, take a 4-1 victory. They go back to back, and they have positioned themselves very well to grab that SSA spot for the major. They're gonna go three p. So I have I have I know one thing, is that the sort of chief, uh, the chief opponent mm-hmm. for or the rival for the Limitless Boys, the Young Money Clan, the infamous Young infamous. Money Clan, are flying out. Saw that to play on better ping mm-hmm. for this last regional. Now, if they were to win, I believe Limitless would still go. Um, I think they, I think I they gotta think get they through. Made... I think they gotta get through Swiss. Yeah, yeah, they have yeah. to move so to Belgium. They're, they're, they're guaranteed. Yeah, so yeah. They, they get it. But I'm actually quite interested in seeing what happens when one of these teams flies out. Um, you know, they know they can't. They probably can't make the major, but they're doing it because they want to prove to themselves that they could um, beat this team on yeah. lower ping, which is interesting to me because that might lead to more players actually moving to SSA. Like we'll see who really wants it and who else wants you know fifty bucks of prize money. Um, so it's Th- cool to see thing, that right? flights to Reunion uh, for mm-hmm. if you if you go there for a couple of days to play there, for example, right? Mm-hmm. Round trip is well over a thousand dollars. So mm-hmm. the prize money from SSA does not make it worth it, not mm-hmm. at all. You'd have you, to so, win, and then you'd still maybe break even. Yeah, and also I think it's more for like org sake. Like if you can show up and beat. Uh, limitless, then you can probably bring that to an org and say, "Hey, like sure. we can if if you if we set up camp here for three weekends a year, we can go to you know land. You can get your branding everywhere." So I think that's a big part of it. But I'm excited to see what you know because there's I know early on in the season everyone was like these European teams are going to beat them on 180 ping. Limitless showed them that they were completely wrong. 
and now we're able to see if they can beat them on 30 pick. So I think it'll add a new dimension of interest to the yeah. Uh, yeah. SSA regional for sure. sure. For now, Limitless hold the crown. Will they do And so? they can still do it against the uh, Young Manic Clan on, on lower ping. I mean, yeah, why, I think why they can't they? Yeah. I think they yeah. will. All right. We have recapped all of the different regions that went down last weekend. We're going to uh, have a special guest join us here in just a moment. All right. Uh, we've got Nick with us today, the coach of M80. We're going to ask him some questions about this recent NA discourse surrounding uh, boot camps. So we're going to talk to him a little about his M80 team. Nick, welcome to the show. Thank you for giving us some time today. Hey, thank you for inviting me on, guys. Yeah, of course. Um, so, I mean, let's just jump right into it. The first thing I think the big one on the docket is just going to be that boot camp discussion. I mean, we saw it on Chalk Podcasts, all over Twitter. Um, give, give us your, just your take about it. Uh, do you think it makes a big difference? What are some of the things that you value in a boot camp or an IRL situation over the, um, you know, the standard situation of each player being at their own individual homes? Yeah, I mean, for example, right now, uh, me, Yoris, and Nas all live together, or well, Technically, me and Nas live together. Yours is own, in his own apartment, and AJ is flying out for Regional 3 as well. It's definitely a different experience and learning how to actually almost be my own adult as opposed to, oh, yeah, you, you wake up, you go to your bedroom, and that's it. You don't have to deal with any emotions after a result. You don't have to talk to each other. You don't have to face each other. But there's also the uh, benefit of you get to deal with things a lot sooner. You get to figure each other out as people. You get to be able to actually see people's body language and reactions to things because I mean like being a coach is quite chaotic online and I'm sure you've probably had very similar experiences where I mean I've had players mute me <laughs> and you, you'll never know um but but in person you know yeah they can try their hardest I don't think they can <laughs> mute me um but it is very nice yeah. you get to experience everything you actually get to build bonds and friendships as opposed to just we're here to work and there's nothing wrong with teams that are just there to work i think there's probably a lot of european teams that work that exact same way but it does help build things like trust and confidence in each other in and out of the server yeah it, it almost seems like it kind of forces accountability on everyone like you have to sit with those negative emotions you get to enjoy those positive emotions with your team it just kind of makes everyone sit and, and really face whatever it is that the team is going through together so that's really interesting um talk to us a little bit about what you think, or, or just your opinion about that boot camp discussion in regard to NA. Why do you think it's less common here? Do you think it would be impactful? Do you think it would help teams improve? You know, What is your take regarding all that discourse that we have seen recently? I think it would help. I think the main issue between EU and NA teams, off the top of my head, right? I think there's two organizations that actually have facilities in the East Coast, which, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, is Shopify and... Is LG. it just Shopify? L LG and Shopify, I believe, are both in Canada, which also is like an LG extra don't layer. have a facility. Oh, I thought they had LG. one in Eastern Canada. No. I so I, I think oh, yeah. it's just Shopify. Okay. And it may be one other org I'm drawing a blank on, but off the top of my head, G2 OG are European orgs. Yeah. Uh, then every other org, TSM, Gen G, all those org, Dignitas is based on the West Coast. So instantly you have to pay for a facility. And um, I mean, this didn't really come out a lot but we had to pay for our own facility uh and our own boot camp for worlds in 21 22 when i was with dig so i i know how much it costs to run a facility we were at the university of north texas which fair play to them they were amazing uh we had to book our own facility own housing own everything eventually dig reimbursed us months later but we were under the impression we were paying for it ourselves so i think we spent around six grand for two weeks um not individually Sure. Uh, I think it was around 1500 individually, but to commit that much for a two week period, you also have to understand what is the benefit in organizations for a team that is, let's say nine through 12 or nine sure. through 16 or 17 through 24, you're investing six to eight K, which I mean, Cloverity put out their statement or whatever that was like 24 K for, I think it was like four or six months, four or five months to run that team. You're investing a month of salary for a two week period for a hope of results getting better. It to be fair, sense. I don't think a lot of European teams in that situation, in that ninth to eleventh or something bracket, are boot camping. It's mostly the top teams in, in that region as well. 
Yeah, yeah it's mean, like I think Resolve is basically the only one that's like constantly boot camping. That Resolve, like, Endpoint, and, and both of those own their own facility. Resolve. Yeah, okay, Endpoint, okay, like, you're right. Yeah, those are. Yeah, uh, and then other teams run it out for a one two week period. But when you look at the orgs that are, it's Carmi and Corp who are running their own stadium at this point, who are just rich. Uh, Vitality, who's had previously government assistance when they were with Renault. Um, general mates who just have Kataga, who's absolutely massive, and yeah, fair enough. They've they've built things to have the organization set up long term. Whereas I still think most North American organizations, from what I can understand, are under venture capital money, which is a whole different thing as opposed to one person fully owning the business and getting to make their own decisions. Of hey, we prioritize the facility, whereas when you're dealing with investment, they may prioritize other things, which is a completely different way of working right so i don't think it's necessarily fair to say oh the players don't want it because right now the obvious answer is all we should cut salaries north america has taken a huge cut on salaries like i can tell you majority of players have taken like a 50 percent pay cut there's very few that have gone up and the ones that have are usually free agents that then got picked up by like top six top eight organizations and it's like okay you know what fair enough they we're getting paid nothing but um for reference like the team's Outside the top eight, last season I think it probably taken a, a sixty to eighty percent pay cut, the majority of them, to the point where their monthly salaries would cover a boot camp. <laughs> and it's like, like how much more you want them to take, right? Like it, it, there is a point where they still have to prioritize being able to live, as opposed to oh well, we want a boot camp. If people were getting paid five hundred a month in boot camping, then it becomes a whole other conversation of all oh, the organizations don't support them financially and they can't do this sure. full time and it's a really big circle that's like come on here. <laughs> like yeah. we we gotta figure yeah. something out. There are um, still esports organizations with money and then if it really does help a ton, then you could argue that it's up to the organizations to prioritize that and right. say, Well, we need this because this helps us win. Do you really think Boot camping has such a big impact that it can really make a difference uh, in terms of results where it can help teams win. Yeah, I mean, I think there was a study on it by, it was one of the guys at Williams in 2122, because I remember participating in it when I was with Queso, where the average result you increased by 45 points after the second boot camp. Um, and in that format, that's a position a half higher, right? So it was going from an eighth to a sixth or a sixth to a fourth or a fourth to a third, whatever, right? That's where I think you can actually see the difference. But it goes back to the point of the study basically showed the first boot camp, you're typically a, a placement worse. And now we're in a scenario where we have six regionals. Like that every regional is kind of do or die here, you know? So yeah, yeah you can kind of understand the waiting, but... If you're gonna to have to wait till the third regional to get a better result, that's a that's a split gone, right? And with how volatile our esport is, man, a split gone like you're already making a roster move, and then you have to build all that stuff back up again. We don't necessarily have the time, especially right now where it's six weeks back to back to back to back, which is this whole other issue. Um, mm -hmm. That's what Epic's decided, you know. So we have to roll with it. Obviously, it's a positive. But there's a bunch of other stuff you have to deal with, like even with Nas, right? Like we were expecting him to have to fly out every two weeks. And then because of the no auto call format, he's had to switch to online school and he's been here with us, which is nice. But that's also a European model. Europeans are much more comfortable saying, OK, you have jobs, you have things like that. We'll let you go online for school. American schools, man, I, I remember when I had like it was some type of cough and I missed like 15 days. Like I was getting cooked. I, I was in early high school i think bro like they were questioning me every single absence from now on i had to have doctor notes i had to have it you don't just get to miss school in america like it's very i don't know the word for it it's very uh it's very rough yeah they, very strict it sounds baseball. like strict, i think yeah. in europe it's more nation by nation it's it's just sure. every yeah. country has its own systems yeah. in place and and also, yeah. it really depends what kind of school you go to. My yeah. mom teaches at a school with a lot of uh, young <laughs> football players and, and judo and, and whatever sports. And they are much more accustomed to letting kids, you know, take a few days off just because they need to compete or they need to be somewhere. 
but at a regular school that would be a lot more difficult of course i think that's a european culture thing like that's a whole that's not north america versus europe that is the culture put into europe is you guys have academies and stuff for sports our academies just start after school like, well your academies are the schools no we don't have yeah, high school or collegiate sports college collegiate no 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 i'm saying like even high school and before like you have to pay for like travel soccer like yeah. that's that type of stuff so i'm talking about mm. it's after school it's never oh i'm missing days for a tournament it, it doesn't really happen yeah. at all whereas i think europeans like I remember Henri was talking about it on a podcast. He was always like, yeah, like in France, there's just schools for the best 100 soccer players in France. And that's what you do from age 12 to 18 or whenever you get picked up. Yeah, that's that doesn't thing. happen in America. Yeah. It, it, so it, I just want to say it, it does happen in Canada. Shout out to Bill Crowther Secondary in Markham, Ontario, the school for the elite athletes. I applied, didn't get it. <laughs> it's okay. Nice. Now I'm on a podcast about Rocket League. <laughs> you tried. Yeah. Um, so, Nick, just quickly uh, to kind of wrap this, uh, what it seems like you're saying is that there's sort of a range, I guess, of, well, things have to line up right for you think for you to believe that a boot camp would be good. We're almost the same situation that you're exactly in right now, where you're a contender to make a major, which means that there's a you know return on investment for the org, um, mm-hmm. and you and the players are being paid enough that you can allow for like some resources to be allocated to um to a boot camp so i'm thinking of a team like space station right two top eights they're still in it but you know i think they've had a little bit of an underwhelming split um would you say for a team like that where it's like there is talent there they are invested in it um and there's a chance for the the organization to represent themselves at a major do you think they would have benefited if they started the split on a boot camp and a facility instead of you know, playing from online as they have for the last two regionals where they've, you know, dropped a series in Swiss and then gone right to having to play one of the better teams in the region in Gen G. Yeah, probably. Uh, I think they're also in a weird spot where their facility is in Utah. So it's like you can't you can't use the facility they spent however much money for. I don't know how much they spent, right? But now it's like, okay, you have to rent the housing, which when we talk about Williams and uh, Endpoint as well, they have the housing covered which as far as I know, both the orgs own it. Uh, that may be wrong. I know Endpoint own theirs because they run them out. Uh, I'm not sure about Williams. So you have to pay for the Resolve housing. has used some of the um, Newcastle. No, that was Endpoint. They, they have some kind of national esports facility that they can use. Um, so that's something that England and Scotland, I think, have worked on. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, but it's the point of they already have the most expensive things covered, right? Like yeah. When we went to unit, like I, I kept seeing the, oh, just use colleges thing. University of North Texas was absolutely amazing. And like we understood what we were paying. And it was also the cheapest we could realistically get. I think it was around two grand maybe for two for a week or two weeks or a week and a half, something like that. And then we had to pay for our own Airbnb to host four or five people. And that alone was the majority of the cost. And then obviously food and things like that, but I mean, shit, if you want to be cheap, you can eat on $5 a day, right? Like, it's not a big deal. Um, But those are the two main costs, and SSG would also be under that same thing of now you have to put all the investment there. And also it has to line up, because sometimes, I mean, like, we we work in esports where we're a bunch of young kids. I mean, hell, I'm a young kid still. A lot of us don't know how to live together. A lot of us don't necessarily have the structure that we understand. Uh, and that's where things like team managers are really helpful where when I worked with Falcon Falcons, Azam was the greatest guy ever to have because it was like an actual adult was there. Um, and, and it sounds so stupid, right? And it sounds so stupid because no, you're getting it paid thousands right. of dollars a month. But it's true. Like just the little stuff where you're like, damn, that's nice. Or like someone gets sick. To be honest, right? I still call my mom of like, hey, what's the best medication of like, what do I need to pick up so I don't take someone out? Right. Of like, she's going to know the difference between what's drowsy and what's not that, you know, it's just the honest truth. Right. Yeah. Um, Cause I don't have those life experiences. I have the experiences of a coach, but I don't necessarily have the life experiences, you know? Um, so I think there's almost a way to say like, yeah, if it's ran poorly, definitely can be a negative. Cause when you look at Casey in particular, Casey's probably the first one, they have all the staff there vitality of 10 different staff members walking around their area as well. 
And it's not just a coach and three players, right? Like it is a company working together. They're not just put up in the middle of Belgrade, Serbia, where they don't know anyone. They don't talk to anyone. That is a family and a full thing of a company. Yeah, fair enough. Don't sell yourself short, Nick. You're 21. (laughs) (laughs) You're a baby, man. Exactly. Um, Yeah, I guess uh, moving on, kind of focusing more on on you and and the team you've been working on. I mean, you you were in a pretty unique situation um, this season where you were kind of given the chance to build a roster or have input on a roster that was built by a a pretty top top level org at this point with M80. Talk talk to us about how that process was and how you came to the decision to, you know, uh, I guess, direct, give the directions to scout these specific three players, AJ, Joris, and Nass. Yeah, so um, I think it was after Regional 2, Marco and Don shot me a message and got me in call. Um, I was already looking to come back to either North America or Europe. It didn't really matter to me which one. I think I probably have a bit of a bias toward North America, because obviously I'm from here. And and it does piss me off seeing all the North America versus EU debates, and I think a lot of people will say the same. Um, But I was talking to a few European organizations This was the main North American organization that reached out to me. Uh, The things like boot camps as well, that was in the first conversation of I wanted a team house. I wanted to be able to build a project, not just a team. Uh, And Marco was very much on board. Don was very much on board. And they gave me the budget to do so. Um, Don by the way, being MAT psycho. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Manager, right? Yeah. General manager, yeah. Yeah. so yeah, uh, they gave me the budget basically of like, this is what I want, this is what they want results was. And I said, okay, let me figure this out. Uh, I reached out to a lot of young players before the season uh, even ended where I was like, yo, don't sign a contract because <laughs> you're, I'm either going to try you out or I know for a fact you're going to get other organizational contracts. Um, we ran through a lot of tryouts from a lot of different regions. I think I've mentioned most of them, so it doesn't really matter if I say them now. Um, Joyo, Mata, uh, I reached out to a chronic. The main North Americans were AJ, Eris, and... No, I probably was AJ and Eris thinking about it now. Um, I talked to a few others, but nothing really came to it. Yoris was someone who I had already really wanted to work with again, because we had worked so well on Dignitas. Um, and Dignitas was also a similar situation where they kind of let me build the roster, kind of not. But that was a lot more chaotic into the off season, so this was nice. Where my contract started the day after Gamers Eight or three days after Gamers Eight, whenever the month ended up, because uh, I didn't want to be unfair to Falcons. I, I wanted to give them my full commitment. But obviously, like let's keep it real. Coming into Worlds, coming into Gamers Eight, half the teams are disbanded anyway, and everyone's already starting to talk. Oh, what are you going to do next season? I mean, like even G One, they talked about it. They were like, "Yeah, we were already trying to help people because we didn't think we could make Worlds." I couldn't believe I it understand. when I like I was there with the teams and That's I was just the, flabbergasted the because all of them were so open. Of, like we're in the midst, we're in the midst of worlds. Like this is the culmination of their season, and so many players are just completely checked out. I was mind blown. Yeah, like it doesn't seem like a lot of teams have that respect, even for their organization or for their teammates to be like, or themselves. Yeah, like we know what. Yeah, like we know what's gonna happen, but. Fuck, if we can win one more series, that's an extra 70 grand in our pocket. <laughs> like, who cares, and, and, and it's like, that's what you worked all season for, right? Like, you earned yourself a spot yeah. here. I mean, I, I come from the sports world. I've been that age. And, like, I'm not, I've never been that high level at anything. But I cannot yeah. imagine checking out. I mean, I just can't. It does. I can't fathom it. I can't understand that at all. Yeah. yeah I've been, I've been on teams be that good. are like that. And it was brutal. Like, you know, as the minute that maybe one or even on, because I was playing basketball, one or two kids, like you can tell that they're ready to move sure. on and they're being very clear about it. And the it, the team can't get going because there's just these black holes yeah. on the team that are just constantly like, oh, you know, whatever. And not paying attention to coaches. It's just, I don't know how it's yeah. allowed. They don't to wanna, it's surprising to me how they have the mental resiliency to actually make it to that point and then not, I know. you yeah. know, like they did the hard work. Just do what they're there for, yeah. yeah. Oh. But sorry, tangent there. I just yeah. want to jump in. Uh, you're good. You're 100 percent right. Like it. <laughs> that's where I go back to. Esports is not professional. Yeah, um, it's not. Not yet. I forgot what we were talking about. Oh, I'm 80. Yeah. 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 
And um, all the different so people that, you've tried out, even some South Americas, South Americans, yeah. right? Yeah, so with the South Americans, it was Mata. I reached out to Trofino quite early into the offseason. Nothing really came of that. He wants to stay in Brazil. It's fine. Uh, KV1, things like contracts didn't really pan out. That's fine. I, I hope he does well in secret because I've reached out to him about 10 times. Um, Mata was just too high priced. Whereas like my big philosophy on Brazilians is usually you can get them for a cheaper buyout and cheaper salary because if you look at their economic situation of the actual country itself, $1,000 US in Brazil is a monthly salary compared to what our monthly salary which is three four k a month like on a lower end it's different things right like that is just understanding the market and you can still get top level players for that price um so yeah yours uh i was in the netherlands i took my mom to see a harry styles concert um awesome. and i met i messaged yours so i reached out to him and we had dinner while we were there and i hinted at it uh that was pre-worlds but that was after we missed the major with falcons just kind of had downtime to figure everything out. Um, AJ didn't really come along until I messaged him. I was after Gamers 8. I didn't talk to him at Gamers 8 as well because no one knew Optic was about to get dropped. Uh, and then they got dropped. And then everything kind of kicked off because I think everyone knew that team was going to break up. But financially, that team probably would have had quite high buyouts because... They had quite high salaries, and I think everyone kind of knew that, which also inflated the market the previous season, uh, which goes back to it. It's just certain orgs come in and overpay, and then people blame the players for taking a -a once-in-a-lifetime salary. That's on the orgs for not knowing how to manage their budget in my eyes, or not having the right staff to put things in place, where I probably work as a bit more of a traditional football manager, where I look at it of, okay, this is everything. And I have people that help me on M80. Like I have Max who does a lot of the logistics stuff. I have Don as well for second opinions and also just being above me. And then Marco as a CEO is super involved. But it comes down to having a full staff. It's not just, hey, we picked up a team with a coach. And I mean, I had that situation with Queso where obviously I'm a lot more biased toward the players because I came from the players side. I didn't work for the organization first, you know? And I think that's where a lot of orgs also probably get it wrong, of not actually figuring out how to build a program. They just go, oh, three players and move on. But that's a whole other thing. And then the players need to buy into the system yeah. that you put in place. So yeah, yeah. how did you make that happen? I mean, I I have a lot of respect for them because we tried a lot of different things where we based a lot of stuff on theory and other things for the first two months and we got killed. I don't think we want to scrim the first two and a half months as a team. So this was like October, November ish until December, uh, like until that OG loss in the oxygen turning that one. Yeah. We were rolling off a theory and we kind of got killed off it. Like it was bad. Um, (laughs) And then we blew everything up. Why they bought into is because I think they had a lot of trust in me. They're also going, okay, well, two of us are moving over. We're all in this together. Let's full commit to this. We have an off season. Let's test things. Let's experiment with things. If they don't work, we at least know. And if they do work, even better. But we know we have a deadline of things of, okay, if it doesn't work by this date, we change. And we changed after and we killed SSG in a show match the next day. So that was great. But I think it's a lot on their character of to be willing to go, yeah, we're willing to lose for a while to figure things out as opposed to like a win now scenario where, I mean, you can see certain organizations are keeping, keep making changes to try and get an immediate result and kind of run this like honeymoon phase. Um, and I think we kind of got screwed by that by not being allowed to play in any off season tournaments, which is rough, but I, I think it's a lot on the guys to just completely believe in me and believe in my experience and believe in JC's ideas and just be open to trying things. Of, if it doesn't work, we understand why it doesn't work. Oh, should I hit my camera? <laughs> good, all good. I'm, Back. My there we go. That's interesting. I think that, uh, uh, like you said, it indicates quite a bit of maturity and trust um, from the players to you and, and towards their team as well, and and just the project in general, because obviously that is a unique scenario. You know, typically when you're forming a team with three other or two other players, um, 
you know, from your own region, not much changes, right? You're still at your computer. Everybody's still at their own home. It's all good, but this is obviously a big risk. And um, I'm, I'm happy to hear that they have bought in and, and trusted you and everything has gone um, gone well enough. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. So you guys have had uh, a great couple of Swiss stages and then we move into the bracket and things seem to start unraveling. Um, talk to us a little bit about that and maybe you're you know, looking forward down the road at, at the major and the rest of the season and, and just give us a an inside peek, a sneak peek at the uh, M80 game plan, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I think right now in Swiss we're executing a game plan, and in bracket we're not. I don't okay. think there's really much to say about that. Yeah. Um, like when you look at us, it's com- two completely different teams, and I'm sure people will keep making the same oh they're Swiss mer- Swiss merchant jokes, yeah. but obviously we're still quite a young team. Like NASA's still moved over here, Yoris has moved over from Europe. There's a lot of moving parts that we've been working with, and I think we understand what's wrong with. A lot of things is right now it's just execution. We understand what we're doing. I think I think there's probably when we execute our game plan, I think we're at the level of G two. And I don't think that's that crazy to say based on the Swiss and the results we've been able to put up in the first stage of tournaments. It's just getting it over the line in the second part. And I mean I use this as a reference with my guys as well. Like you guys all remember the narrative of Queso's field, right? Like, oh, game five, game seven, they win. Yeah. Y'all remember we started 0-7 on game fives, right? <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> like, that, that fall split like, was brutal. Yeah, yeah we were 0-5 or 0-7, I, th- I think it was, in game fives. Mm-hmm. Or when you look at the Astralis dynasty, they were choke artists. <laughs> like, fair and simple, they got second every single time. And then when they won once, they won everything. Yep. Us, it's getting it over the line once. And we understand what we need to do to change that. And it's a lot of things like I'm friends with a few other coaches and I've sat down and talked to them about how they prepare and how they game plan and where, what am I doing differently compared to them? And, you know, I think I've been able to actually learn a couple more things about myself. Cause obviously like I was never a player and that's probably my biggest weakness it can also be a big strength, but it is a big weakness as well. Cause I've never been in those situations of, thinking about X, Y, and Z, or how to balance necessarily a tournament. And that's where I'm still learning, and I get a lot of feedback from them, and I'm really appreciative of that, because I think they are quite honest with me. Um, But it is just execution at this point, and I have complete faith that we'll still be at Copenhagen. I mean, right now, like realistically, look at the scenarios. If we get us out four, we're getting at least a tiebreaker if not making it, right? If the rest of the top four are G2, Luminosity, and um, Gen Chi, all we need is a top four. Yeah. If it's two of the three, and then SSG, POAB, OG, and there's one other team Dig. that makes top four, well, Dig have a point on us, so we have to do one better than them. Right. Whereas all the rest is like, you know, it is what it is. I guess you've gotten lucky that the rest of the region has also been pretty inconsistent overall. I don't even think it's been inconsistent, man. I, I just don't think... I don't know. There's no really nice way to say it. I, I think there are tiers in North America right now. Yeah, but it's hard to say who belongs in which tier. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it is G2 and then a gap. And then uh, Gen G and Luminosity seem in quite a similar tier to me at least and then it's all just a bit of a uh a crapshoot for the rest of NA. i think it's a nice way to say it feels like it's still fleshing itself out i mean we we did have a very um a drastic off season with lots of changes for that region specifically in a you know this this narrative has drummed on forever about um gatekeeping and you know players sticking at the top and not making changes not bringing new talent blah 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 um but this this past offseason, I think that's definitely not been the case. We've seen a lot of teams break up that have existed forever. I mean, the Chicago JNAPs duo, obviously the NRG trio. So um, I'm sure all these teams are still figuring things out. We've got a new format as well. Um, I mean, just a lot of moving parts for the entire ecosystem. So um, NA has definitely been interesting. Like you said, it is kind of a, it's a jumble, a hodgepodge of, of like 10 teams, really, is what it is. And G2 does seem to be on top, but... Um, there are a lot of teams, I think, that are still figuring things out, kind of like you talked about earlier with your own squad, Nick. And it will be very interesting 
to see how this third event unfolds because the pressure is on and it starts all the way back in quals, you know. So, um, and I think that's all I got. Michael or Yens, y'all have any other questions for Nick before we let him uh, let him go today? I think we have one yeah, more, I Michael. Got, yeah. Do uh, you have one more? No, go for it. Oh, yeah, I got one more. So, um, you know, I asked, uh, <clears throat> I, I try to ask a yes or no question at the end of all of these just because I like to get some finality. Um, so my yes or no question for you is, uh, M80, they make, are y yes or no making LAN and yes or no making yeah. top eight on the LAN? Because you know if you get there, you got to go crazy in the Swiss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we do have a bit of a layup there, right? So Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, mean, I, I totally back us to still be in Copenhagen uh, and hopefully do even better out there. Awesome. Thank you, man. Thank you so much for, for, being, for being here and for taking the time. Of course. Appreciate it, Nick. Thank you. All right, moving on from the uh, talk there with Nick. We appreciate his time. We're going to jump into the regional preview for Europe. The Kings, they get a, a special treatment, a weekend all to themselves for everyone to watch. Europe and the four, uh, the four-headed horsemen, the four French powerhouse. We've got, um, obviously, last event was incredible. I think that showed a lot of people just how good these teams can be. I know we talked about uh, before the event, I was a little bit skeptical of Gentlemates. I was a little bit skeptical of BDS. Um, not that I thought they would be bad, but I just didn't know if they would immediately be, um, you know, performing at the same level that I had the confidence in, in Carmen Court and Vitality doing. And man, they did. There was no reason for hesitation or reservation. They were rocking and rolling. And I'm excited to see this event. But with that being said, um, not everybody had a smooth run through quals. I mean, KC no. lost their one seed, so Team Su will be taking it, who finished, I think, 15th, 16th in the last event. And now, because of that, we have a Swiss oh, round oh. one matchup between Gentlemates and Carmi Corp. <laughs> I, I feel so bad for the Gentlemates. <laughs> they, their first round matchups in Swiss, the first two tournaments, were yeah. BDS and Carmi Corp. And all they've done is take care of business, one. right? They go yeah, through. They just get through uppers, and they're good. <laughs> and then it's like, here's your reward. The uh, best funny. team in the world. Uh, like, crazy. Funny. Um, yeah, but I mean, uh, like you said, we didn't quite know what to expect from Gentlemates from the start. Um, I wanted them to do well. I thought they could do well, but I, I was still like, yeah, they could still fall flat. Sure. And now that they've shown they're not a team to fall flat, I believe in them to make it really far, to go mm -hmm. to the finals, whatever. I mean, they're just in that, I would say, top two conversation. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Right now. I, I, I love yeah. the way they played, too. It felt very balanced. Um, you know, something that we talked about OG earlier, and I, I like that their style incorporates everyone. You know, sometimes you'll have, like, a superstar player and, and the other two kind of make way for that individual, or two of them are kind of a duo when you have that third fill-in and, and whatever else. But I, I really like the way that Gentlemates played. Um, you know, we've mentioned Nolly, and earlier I mentioned Andy, where it seems like they, they're a player that elevates whoever you throw on their team. And I feel like Itachi is another one of those individuals. He just does such He's a good one, job of, of finding his teammates, getting them involved, and you know doing whatever needs to be done for the team. He's such an intelligent player. Um, and I think that, frankly, I think he kind of, myself included, probably gets slept on a little bit because he doesn't have some of these huge highlight plays that the likes of Atira or Zen or whoever might um, constantly be putting up. So I love that gentleman squad as well. I'm excited to see, especially, my word, a team that has that kind of audience immediately uh, popping off and getting into the finals in their first event ever. It's just you couldn't draw it up better than that. But I do want to focus on this qualifier for Europe because we saw both in the NA and EU in event one went fairly standard. We had one team in NA, which you could argue uh, missed out a top 16 with Omelette, Lion Blaze, and Neil Percy. But even then, I don't think that's just an absolute shocker. Um, and Europe really didn't have too much uh, nonsense go on throughout the first qualifier either. But now that we've jumped into the second one, We've seen NA with Rebellion go top four in event one, miss event two. And now we've seen Resolve, who was top 11, Moist, who was top eight, 100%, uh, yeah, 100%, who was top 14. I think they went one yeah, and three. Yeah, but they, they beat Vitality. So they went you know, one and like three. The... Um, you got three teams that were in main event, one of them being top eight, Moist. All of them missed event number two. And not only that, Endpoint got knocked to lowers in day two. They were not even day three. They started day three in the lower bracket. And so, I mean, it's just pure chaos with this huge open qualifier format. I told you last episode, 
at the very end, I told you I'm so scared for EU. <laughs> yeah. I'm so scared. Well, and I, all my fears came through. That. Yeah, I want to highlight that. So I know I think this this is we we have such a negative sort of discourse around the NA versus EU depth thing, mm -hmm. but I think this shows it. And I was doing some research. I was grinding. I was grinding the uh, the all twenty the Rocket League all twenty two, and I and I found this right where of of the there've been 39 regionals between NA and EU uh, over the last since the online era ended so 21 22 22 23 in this year of those 39 regionals 32 of them have been won by eight players the teams of eight eight players of these teams on them wow. uh Zen, Zen, uh Vitira Zen, Monkey Moon, Seiko, Appjack, First Killer, Beast Mode, Atomic that's about 83%. All, those eight players have also won every single LAN and been 14 of the 16 LAN finalists. And I think Oops. the reason I'm saying that is because think about Europe and their domestic leagues and their bubble scene and their, you know, two, their twos tournaments. And they have these regional scenes where top players have, a, you know, in a relationship with their lower players, right? That gives these bubble players way more motivation than the North Americans have. It's I, I was I, I have this literally in my book. It's not a cultural issue. It's not that the NA players are lazy and blah blah blah. And we're some for some reason allowed to talk terribly about these kids. It's a structural issue. There's so much more for European bubble players to do, and I think that makes this format so much tougher for Europe because these players are constantly playing threes, constantly scrumming, constantly playing domestic leagues and bubble tournaments. And they're showing up hungry. They think they're every bit as good as the uh, teams that are in the main event because they play them in like random weeklies and, and yeah. you know, uh, stuff like that. And I think as the season goes on, this is going to be how it is. Teams are going to make top eight, top four. Oh, yeah. Multiple teams are going to make top eight, top four, not make the regional the next time because there's no fear. There's no respect given oh, between yeah. these. They all think they're the, better than each other. Did you see that Arsenal clip? Yeah, exactly. Which, you know, like that's that is what it is, and I think it's so explain, he was comparing two's gameplay from ranked from NA and from EU. Yeah. And in NA, they just got all the time in the world off kickoff to go for a challenge on the other side of the field. Yeah. And in EU, some player called Velocity, I mean, let's put some respect on Velocity's name, he, he is a ranked player that's been around, but yeah. for Arsenal, it's a no name, sure. and he's just pre jumping off the ceiling on <laughs> Alpha 54's yeah. ball, yeah. It's a it's a rank twos match with Zen, Vatira, Alpha, and a two K twos grinder, and the two yeah. K twos grinder is like Full first sin. play. Like I'm I'm going to Apex <laughs> play. Like Dude. that's the type of thing, right? And I don't think, and I don't, I don't, I hate that we hate on NA for that. When instead, it, we should be applauding that Europe yeah, yeah. has created such an incredible ecosystem and, and such an incredible structure for these players to come up. They have so much room to grow. So many threes tournaments. So many little things they can do. And that leads to this. Because when you know that if you're not one of those eight players, you can't, you're probably not going to win a regional, it's hard to have the motivation to get up and really grind that hard. But Europe has so many ways that you're able to develop and grow and make connections. And I love seeing it because it makes the scene so much more exciting. It definitely does. Um, Europe, the, the, the scene, it's just got to, I think there's a lot of things contributing to it. I think what you, you've outlined, I think Johnny outlines... Um, kind of the sub communities that exist in Europe mm -hmm. with with the Spanish speaking community, the French speaking community. Um, I think we outlined it earlier with so much of Europe's early success with KDOP, Turbo, BP. Um, there's a lot to inspire players. There's there's you know it's a good system. And, and I also want to say this too. Um, props to the, all the upcoming talent for for chasing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, yeah. All those things can be in place and they could still not put the work in. But the players put the work mm -hmm. in and you've got to give them praise for that. Um, incredible, incredible talent. And you talked about this is going to keep happening. Absolutely, it's going to keep happening, especially when we got brackets like this where we have two teams that have never, um, you know, we got, we got two teams finding one another in the lower side yeah, with only one player between the six that have ever made main event. Yeah. Meanwhile, in a different part of the bracket, you have Resolve and Moise coming against one another, and it's not even qualifier match yet. So these... Yeah. These brackets, when seeding is not given the proper care, you're going to have things be a bit imbalanced. I think the, the thing is that people are hearing this and they are interpreting that as an excuse. Resolve and Moist have to own the fact that they fell to lowers. There is no excuse.
they should beat the team that they lost to. But it doesn't change the fact that this format has not, I, I don't think it's the ideal structure for finding the top 16 teams in the region consistently. And I, I don't, It's also frankly, terrible for orgs. It, uh, absolutely. Terrible, um, terrible but frankly, I, I don't think that that take is even questionable. This is not yeah. the greatest format for finding, consistently finding the top 16 best teams in the region. But it is what we've That's got. The and the players, yeah. they, they've got to operate in this system. One thing that I'm going to continue to, you know, pair it along, it's not unfair. This is not unfair. You've heard that from the, the Rebellion um, founder and owner. He said that on Twitter. And, and all of these um, teams, I think they are accepting that as well. You know, it's not unfair. Just because things didn't work out in their favor doesn't mean that it's unfair to them. The format is the format. Everybody's operating under the same umbrella. And you just, you got to deal with it. And you got to play hard and you got to hope for the best. And so um, that's what they're going to do. But you're exactly right, Michael. This is going to continue to happen. With that being said, unfortunately, Moise is essentially out of the race. They're not making this first major uh, now that they've missed they've that made, event. They've made an enemy out of me as well. Well. Them in rebellion. I mean, yeah. I, was, I went to war. <laughs> Like you said, that whole bracket was really tough and probably shouldn't have team. happened in that way. But then again, Moist lost to Solary yeah. and Resolve, and neither of those teams made it to the top 16. Yep. So yeah. Moist no, lost out against two teams who didn't even make the Swiss stage. EU in the mud. In the yeah, mud. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> that, would, that would never happen to Dignitas. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Putting all oh, my... Don't do <laughs> yeah, it's going to happen next event because you just did that. Yeah, going out it's happening 64. next Turbo's weekend, bro. Turbo's cheeks for men. Turbo's cheeks for men, for sure. Turbo but, double tap ceiling zen reset on Arsenal's head, Turbo's so. cheeks knock him out. Putting yeah. all the EU bias that they may have uh, aside, Michael mentioned it earlier off stream already. We can say EU is a great region, but France mm. is a great region. The they rest are. of Europe are just as inconsistent as NA. Yeah. Francophone. Yeah. The Francophone like sort of thing. Like Morocco, I think, and, and, and Belgium yeah, yeah, yeah. involved. Like if yeah, you take yeah, yeah. the French speaking world out, because if exactly. you don't if it's just France, it's like you still got You're Trali, right. and yeah. Itachi and Kakao is still probably yeah. the best team in the world, right? But like the Francophone sort of world. The UK teams, they're just like fodder at this point. It's just like, who does KC have to get through to get the 3 0? It's beat like nine British guys. And then, you know, the Spanish teams, they, they put up a fight. But I mean, I think, in t I, I really hope a Spanish team can make a land because the last time we saw Spanish teams on land, like actual Spanish, not like Sam, it was a mess, right? You had G1 at the Worlds and then G1 at the Winter Major. Oh my goodness gracious. That, that series against G2. I, I bet you Atomic still thinks about it at night. Um, so, yeah, I mean, France is just, they're so far ahead. And I think it goes back to, like, the structure. Like we said, like, they have bubble lands. Like, they have French lands where, like, you would have t t players not even playing with their pro teams. They're just mixing it up, playing. So they have players who are motivated. They have great role models, Monkey Moon, K-Dop, yeah. who show you how to play the game the right way. And they have the structure to get everybody the yeah. uh, experience Zen. they need. Zen got his first land win before he even touched the RLCS. Played with Vatira and Exotic. No. Zen shout, shout Exotic, to, random France bubble land. Shout out to Rocket Baguette <laughs> contributing yeah, to that. Amazing. Um, so, so many, so many incredible people in that community. Um, they deserve all the success that they're having right now. So I think that answers the question. Can anyone challenge the French four? Seems like we're all in agreement. No, la France est meilleure. Not yet. Oui, oui. So, Est-ce que je peux aller aux toilettes? I, I, I'm out on this. Y'all yeah. are not going to hear an Arkansan try a, a French accent. I'll butcher that so bad. All right, so let's do this really quick. We'll run through it, and I'll tell you what, we'll just do it one at a time, um, and we'll just go in a, a circle here. So the Swiss stage, um, let me pull up real quick the <clears throat> um, round one matches, excuse me, and we'll give our quick take on how these things unfold. So round one, you've got Su versus Hosky. That, by the way, that's that's seed one taking the one, on seed the 16. 116 matchup. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean 115, I should say. Yeah. 115. So that probably should not really be seed one, but on the other hand, they have been playing really well. So yeah. I'll give it to them. Um all right. Yeah, uh, as a Tho fan. As a Tho fan. Okay, so we're in agreement. So takes uh so takes that match. We got Genomates versus Armin Corp. I'll say KC. Oof. I'm gonna take the, the gentle Nate. Match. It's the grand yeah. finals in round one. 
<laughs> I'm taking the gentle mates. I'm going to go on record here. Okay. Because my boy Seiko is Ballin. just he's my been my favorite player in Europe for a very long time besides Joyo until about 24 hours ago when I decided I didn't like him anymore. Um okay. and I, I think that they're just going to come out and I think they're going to punch him in the mouth the same way that they punch BDS in the mouth uh, in their first round series last one. I really like the way Gentlemates plays Rocket League. Yeah. But um, I don't think they have really caught up to Carmine Corp yet. They okay. are such a strong team. So Carmine Corp for me. All right, we got Vitality versus Caliente. Caliente. Um, I'm going to say mix. that Vitality is going to win. But I will say that I watched the qual match for uh, Caliente when they played another team. They won a game 9-2. They're good, dude. Like, and they were up 9-0. <laughs> like, good. they just let in a couple last goals. Bro, they, it's, yeah, it's so. Sizen and Growly who were both, yeah. like, uh, occasionally top six throughout last season at top different three. points. Both of them made a... Growly made a top three. Sizen made a top two. Yeah, that, that's, um, that's a ball team. Around. And, and you want to talk about... Biscuit's like, around. drink? And I'm not... Yeah. I'm not saying this about those players, but they were left over. They were just left alone. I don't yeah. know why. They're, They're more of a leftovers talents. team than 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 gentlemates. Than Absolutely. Like world top 20 players. I'm just I, gonna say, I think, yeah, I think a chronic needs to like maybe take a look at what's going on over there yeah. and stop playing on uh, whatever. I'm not sure, gonna sure. But yeah, sure. I'm gonna take Vitality 3-2. I think it'll be fun. Vitality 3-0. Vitality 3-0. I don't know if y'all saw when Zen lost that screenshot of him. Where he's just sitting there, and it's just just this look of yes, like yeah. despair, and it really you know what that you know what that reminded me of. It reminds me of like this anime villain origin story, where like this <laughs> traumatic thing happens, and he experiences this awful thing, and then it's just lights out for everyone. Yeah. And that sucker's almost twenty six hundred MMR in twos. He is on the grind. I think mm. that boy took it personally, and I think we're about to see, um, you know, undoubtedly number one in the world players in. Once again, here for regional number two. He so I'm going by Chaudi. I don't think it's going to be close. See it. Pro map. I want to see the shot he hit against the shot he hit against 100 percent, where he got a 50 off the sidewall, jumped onto their backboard, and then jumped and flipped back and scored. I can't even describe it properly. <laughs> yeah. you, it's on Fury's uh, Twitch. The best shot I've ever seen in a pro Rocket League match. Not even close. I was like, okay, he's back. All right. Next up, we got Team BDS versus Redemption. I'll go ahead and go first. I'm going BDS. Is there a way for a team to 4 0 in Swiss? Because if there is, <laughs> BDS with 4 0, it's going to be a butt kicking. Yeah, Redemption. I mean, it's not the first time we're seeing them around, but BDS is one of those Francophone strong teams, so there's no way they're losing right now. Yep. Top Cougars versus Fast Forward. I'm taking the Cougs, man. The Cougs. I love Relating Wave. You know what? We all forget the longest land streak for a while, was Relating Wave. He made five in a row, uh, and he almost made six. He lost in a tiebreaker, and I'll never I'll never doubt my boy. So give me Relating Wave in five. Man, we have a Belgian in the mix, fast forward. And even a, a Flemish player. So <laughs> that, that's where I live. But yeah, Do it. I don't think fast forward looked as good as top, top, top Cougars in... Uh, in those qualifying matches before the Swiss stage, Top Cougars should have this yeah. if you look at their current form. Yeah. I, I do like that Top Cougars team. Wave, Acro, Toxic. I think Acro and Toxic are individuals that um, I think have a lot, a, a lot more to give as far as a professional player. I think they have not achieved what they're capable of just yet. Um, and they, they've got Greg in as well. I think he's a solid coach. And so I'm going to go with Top Cougars as well. I do want to give a shout to my boy Seamus over there on uh, Fast Forward. Love that. Love that player. He he is a, a personality. So best mm -hmm. of luck to them. And and congratulations for two events back to back. It's not easy to do that. So we got next up Magnifico versus Endpoint. Um I'm gonna go Magnifico. Ooh. I like that squad. I think they're gonna be a, a consistent top eight top eight force in Europe. I think uh, I'm gonna go with Endpoint. Um I just like I've always liked that core. Um I think uh Smokes is really good. I think he's been really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am less invested in Magnifico than others. I don't think they're the best Spanish team. So I'm going to go endpoint 3-1. Okay. My brain says Magnifico, but my heart says endpoint. Um, from what I've seen from these qualifiers the past weekend, 
I think Endpoint has a really good chance, so I'm taking Endpoint on this one. Got it. All right. Billy Gold versus Oxygen. This is Billy real gold. hoops. This, this is, is real hoops right here. As, a, as an Oxygen individual, this is so stressful. Billy Gold is it, a team that I think, if you are not super tuned in, you're going to look at that squad and be like, oh, Oxygen, no doubt. But that team is, they're playing great Rocket League, man. Hyder's playing well, Speed's playing well, Temper's playing well. And that is spooky because, frankly, we're not playing that well right now. But I have not lost faith. I think Large Oscar's going to turn it around. Come on, we're going to get a round one victory here and get started uh, on, in event two. We're going to get started on the right foot. I, I'm, I'm taking Oxygen here. I'm going to go with uh, Speed Esports, I think, speed unfortunately. Esports. Because... This and listen, I would love for him to, to to prove me wrong because I think he's great and I really like the oxygen team. But typically, as soon as an Archie team has one bad result, they really struggle to rebound. Mm. Um, and when they do, it usually takes them a while. So I'm gonna go. I'm, I don't know if they're gonna be able to just like lock in and go three zero in Swiss here. Um, even though I do believe that Oski is like going to be by far the most talented person on the pitch. Sure. I also just like. You know, speed winning matches in RLCS in 2024 is so awesome that yeah. I can't bet against them. So let me go belly, belly goal of the score, maybe 3 1. Hoodie, I'm giving you the chance to be really smug next week. <laughs> I'm going belly goal as well. I mean, the fan favorites are going to go Dude, against them. Look, here's the thing. We have this tendency to just flop early in Swiss, too. So, like, you guys, I, I can't even, I can't even, like. Yeah. I feel like a team like Oxygen sometimes struggles to play up to their competition. Like, yeah, 100% agree. Whereas when, when they meet stronger teams, they... They step up. They, they step up, but they really need to show that they can beat the yeah. little bit weaker teams as well. That's exactly right. I mean, if you look back, I mean, we played BDS to Game 5 in the Swiss, and at the same time, we're losing to, you know, Team 3 and Endpoint 3-1. Mm -hmm. to one. So um, I think there's no doubt in anyone's mind that BDS is a little bit of the stronger opponent than those two yet here you know here we are and we can't we can't perform as well against those teams so i think you're on the nail with that um we do have a tendency to play to the level of our opponent but i believe in snasky come on <laughs> come on uh we got team I three well. versus oida oida that's yukio's team right that's yeah Yukio's team. Yep. i think that is um austrian slang for like hey there or something like oi oh. basically in, in british english okay oi. okay oida. then i think i think that's i haven't confirmed that sure with that makes sense austrian friends, but i think that's it i'm, I'm gonna go team yeah. three here that team three um squad has has impressed me um i think catalyst has been a player that um i guess kind of similar to ajg like i said earlier just been like chronically underrated and yeah. I kind of get it. Like, he's never really popped into that top tier, you know, never had uh, huge results. But I do think that he's a very solid player. And the, the team chemistry on this squad is, is, is great. I mean, they've got their own roles, and they, they all, um, you know, play for one another and, and, and play to each other's strengths. Mark is a menace on the field, positioning and, and uh, demoing and bumping and just causing problems, and the other two get involved as well. And I think that... Uh, the way that they're playing is, is giving Catalyst a little extra space to do his thing, and, and they look great. So I'm, I'm going to go Team 3 there. I'm going to also go Team 3. Um, Speed and Yukio in a regional. What year is it? I wasn't about to say it. <laughs> What's going on here, guys? But, yeah, I mean, I was really impressed by them last week. I thought they were really, really good. Mark by 8 continues to be the only player ever to just, like, make every land he, in every split he plays in and then just get dropped. But and but every, every year he comes back with a new roster and his team looks good. Uh, forever one of the most underappreciated players yep. I think that uh, we've ever seen in Rocket League. Um, I'm going to take them 3-0. I think they're going to, I think Spanish Bim Bam is very good against teams that are a little slower, and I think that they're going to cook very early in this bracket. Cook. Speed and Yukio in the top 16 in 2024 is amazing, but also I'm rooting for our only prospect making his debut, Eugene on Oida, in Europe at least, right? Um, so, and because Europe is the only region playing next weekend, that means he is literally the only prospect making his debut next weekend. So I got a root for him, and I'm going to say Oida. I love it. Back it. All right, well, there's our predictions for round one of Swiss stage for Europe. Um, tune in this weekend. It's bound to be chaotic, as we said at the top of it there. We had all kinds of chaos in round one last time and i'm sure europe will deliver once more 
So tune into that. We've got our uh, recurring segment, Buy the Dip. Gentlemen, what are we feeling this week for good value fantasy RL picks? Yens, we'll go to you first. What you feeling? Sure. I'm feeling juicy. <laughs> oh, feeling juicy, are you? <laughs> I'm feeling juicy. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh, but <laughs> I do think that's a good Brutal. pick because he's 1450. Yeah. And last event he scored over 500 points, which for that prize is, is really good. Um, do you have Psycho on the team, which has been the player to get the points in those uh, fantasy leagues? But do you see if he can have a good day, he can step up and. And get up there for fourteen fifty. That's not a bad bad deal. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, Stizzy. Uh, we were talking about it a bit off camera, but for all the fan RL veterans, the ones who've been grinding since it first uh, sort of popped up, you know that Stizzy is like maybe the fan RL goat for value. He his teams haven't done as well as you'd hope. You know he was he was teaming with Oslo and VK Salem for a while but he's always put up insane numbers. And so it's actually really nice because when your players make it further, yes, they're probably playing better, so they're going to have better stats on aggregate. But that, like them flopping in a series can cook your team. With Stizzy, he's always been able to just show up, he plays a few series, he scores a bunch of goals, and then he's up. And I think Magnifico will probably, you know, at least make round five of Swiss. But he's such an individually talented player who's had other stuff kind of stop him from moving up in the game. Yeah. But it feels like he's really starting to come around now. I think he was very, very highly touted and for a reason then just kind of didn't put it all together for whatever reason. And uh, I think he's going to grow and, and continue to play that super, super stat heavy player um, stat the, in, in, the, in this regional. Yeah. Last event though, he only scored 460 points. I think he's trying too hard to play for the team. I think that is part of why his price is down a little bit. So yeah. Michael could be onto something, um, but I will say this, you got Tox right there expensive. beneath him. At fourteen fifty, and I think both of those are actually a good price, a little bit of a gamble, and here's why: they've got a player on their team that is a stat legend. Atomic is consistently like five hundred and seventy points plus, um, and I think that he just ends up in the position to to make the saves, to get the goals, and and ends up with uh, a very hefty fantasy score uh, weekend after weekend. So I am going to steer away from the Magnifico team and I'm going to take a gamble. Ooh, we're going on Itachi at 1400. Now Itachi is never a big time, um, big time stat individual, but he does occasionally have pop-offs. And here's what, here's what I think. If you're getting a player at 1400 and you can uh, consistently get a good 500 to 550 points, I think that's a solid choice for that 1400. And here's, here's, uh, let me give you some reasoning here. You want a couple solid, consistent 14, 1300 point players. That way you can spend that extra money on a 1600, 1700, 1800 player. Um, so I think Itachi will be one of those good players to plug in as a low value player. You don't have to expect too much from him. You get that 500, 550 points from him, and then you can spend your big bucks on some of the other individuals that consistently put up uh, big numbers in fantasy. But that is our buy the dip segment. Get on fanrl.com. Make yourself a team. I've got a league. Got some cash prize in there if you want to I'm join I'm in that it. league. Uh, Michael's got a league. Jump in there. I, no, I'm sorry. I'm in your league. league. Oh, you're in horrible. the league. Okay. I did horrible this week. Dude, I actually, actually don't listen. I'm actually kind of cooking. I, I am so bad. I think I'm top three right now overall. If I win my I own money, up. is it rigged? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had, That'll be my cope for sure. I had gyro, which wasn't great, but... Yeah, I, wait, I'm gonna, I had a really bad week. I'm, I'm I, I still have Alpha 54, Juicy, and Drali, so... Actually, no, I did well. I did well in the, in the global one, because I had Percy. Shout out to Percy, 6'11". Shout out to Percy. Yes. Well, let's do our next segment, Speed Taking, where we take... We grab some of your takes from the shift cord, we bring them here, and then we rate your take in around 30 seconds or so. Let's just, uh, let's rock right into it. We've got uh, six takes here, so we'll have two for each of us, and I'll throw one to Michael first. Pirates on a boat has a realistic shot at a major spot in North America. Yeah, yeah, I think it's super realistic. I think, um, I think, like I said, I really like five up. I think Andy's always solid. He's already made a major before in his career, and I think Eris has a very high ceiling floor, sort mm -hmm. of, but it's almost by design in the way he plays. 
Um, so I think with the way, how wide open that last spot looks right now, um, you know, that one point for Dignitas might actually be the difference. But right. I think that they, I wouldn't be super surprised. I'd be surprised, but I wouldn't be super surprised if if Pobe was was a representing North America in Copenhagen because I think they've earned it. They played really well and they've shown that they are a competitive team, and that's all you can ask for. All right, let me throw one over to Yens. We'll put you in a weird spot here. Is it disrespectful sure. to Europe to put G two over any of the current top four teams? Is it? Di no, it's not disrespectful. I mean, let's be real. Um, G2 are amazing. I already said earlier on that yeah. they can compete. Let's also be real. I don't think they're going to touch the, let's say, top two teams in EU right now. Um, but there's definitely, like, a BDS. Who else would I put in there? <laughs> oh, that is hard. Put, that is very hard. Put, put, yeah, G2. Oh, you're putting Falcon. me on the spot right now. I mean, if. Vitality can't improve over last weekend or, or two weekends back, then I'd say maybe over Vitality, but I think they will get back on the grind, like you said. Yeah. Um, but yeah, absolutely. They can mix and match some of those teams. I don't think all of them. I think EU, in terms of just raw gameplay right now, are just ahead in, well, the francophones, the top four, yeah, yeah. but not all of the top four will will guarantee be making it over over G two. No, no, that's not very really disrespectful at all. All right, Hootie, I got one for you. All right, throw it at me. I'm gonna put you in another, not an awkward spot, but yeah. one that you you might you might stir some stir the Ooh, pot a little bit. Stir it up. Well, your your take is LG's run to the finals in the Open Qualifier two for North America was a Mickey Mouse run. Um, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Was it as hard as running through G2 and Gen G? Absolutely. Uh, not the case there. I think it's fair to say that. I mean, that's just the ratings of the region at the moment. Um, but we saw a strong OG team that took down M80. I think a lot of people back M80 and give them credit, at least talent wise. Maybe they haven't figured things out. Um, and NRG with Drees certainly looked like an improved squad as well. I think, um, you know, I, I'm not an individual to call Mickey Mouse runs like really ever. Um, I think. I can really only think of one specific moment where you could claim something like that. And it was when, um, you know, Falcons couldn't make it to the major. And so oh, yeah. like their group literally didn't, you know, they didn't have the fourth team, something like that, I think would be Mickey, but you know, I, I don't like to hold it against teams. Um, you beat who's in front of you, right? Like you, you have no control over that. And I think um, not only did LG beat those teams, they dominated them. I mean, it was four Oh and four one. So um, no, I would not say Mickey Mouse run. And and listen, frankly, just to build on that, LG has been the most threatening to G2. I know they've been swept and then they got 4-1, but those matches are actually competitive and close, whereas when G2 is playing anyone else, it, it really hasn't been. So, no, I would not say Mickey Mouse run. Um, LG definitely deserved that top two. Definitely uh, wasn't the Chiefs. We'll, we'll stay on it then. Let me throw it over to you, Michael. Cheese, a top 10 player in North America. I think he's playing like one. Mm. Um, I think, you know, it's tough because you don't really, I mean, you can count all three of the players on G2 as yeah. top, top 10. You can count LJ clear top 10. I think you can count uh first killer top 10. That's like five. And then I think Jack and chronic have earned the right, even though I don't know if they've been sure. playing yeah. to that level, but after like those last three spots, it feels like they change all the time. Like, you know, one day it looks like Nas is in there and another day it looked like two pieces in there and then they have bad days. So I think. She's had a real like I had a star making performance to be yeah. honest with you. Um, this this tournament, I think he established himself as the, as the force on that LG team. Mm -hmm. um, but and I would hesitate to like just lock him in there. But I think as yeah. of right now, in the sort of fluid power rankings of things, he's definitely sitting low top ten. Yeah, I like that. And Yens, I'll throw you another EU question here. Moist losing in quals isn't a format problem. It's Europe having extremely deep field of talent. That's, a tough That's one. two takes, yeah. and both of them are wrong. <laughs> both of them are both are just no way. You have first off, it's not a format. Pro it's absolutely a format problem. Like that's what we spent a whole segment on yeah. last week. Format flaws. I mean, even though they should have won, the fact that you have all these teams in one 
tiny part of the bracket where you have other parts of the bracket with teams, with players that would make it against the teams in that part yeah. of the bracket. They wouldn't make it against the Resolve or against the Moist or even against the Solary. So there's a format flaw right there. We pointed it out. It came true. That's just what happened. And the other part um, was that the field is so deep. Don't let make me laugh. That's just, I mean, I, I was in despair over the weekend. Um, yes, the French teams, the Francophone teams still show up, but you just look like a second coming of NA. <laughs> There's so much chaos and inconsistency and just random results going in random directions. It's not a matter of EU depth at that point. There is maybe more EU depth than NA depth, but that doesn't explain this situation. Sure. So the uh, final take here. Last one for you. Yeah, yeah last, one. last one for you. Which is, Udi, will only one MENA team make it out of Swiss at the major in Copenhagen? Yes, only Falcons. I do think this Rule 1 squad is a solid team. I think they will uh, probably be fighting for that top eight. I imagine they'll go deep into the Swiss. But I do think the Falcons is a, a cut above. And I think when you throw Rule 1 um, into that international mix, um, I, th I just think they're just on the cusp. You know, they're, they're 10, 11, 12, maybe 14 in the world. Uh, now, obviously, there are... It, the major's a little bit different because it's not exactly like... Specifically, top Not sixteen. Exact. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that I think that there will be. I think there will be uh, Falcons. I think there will be three or four European teams. I think there will be two, three, possibly four NA teams as well. Um, and then Sam could see both of them in the top eight, depending on who goes. So um, yeah, I, I don't. I, I don't think so. I think we'll see one. I think Falcons will make top eight, but uh, and possibly further, but but not rule one. That's the thing, right? Without South American teams, they could get past sure. a couple of those four mm -hmm. EU and four NA teams. Right. But we have Sam in the mix as well, and then that makes it really difficult. And hey, maybe Power shows up finally and puts OCE on the map. Who knows? They and almost beat Rule 1 last year. Remember that? They went Game 5 <laughs> yeah. with Power with, uh, with the old Falcons roster. If anything, first. Oceania looks like they've regressed. They just <laughs> don't look as strong at the moment. They were the original expansion region, mm -hmm. and... Look at them now. Yeah. I mean, well, they don't get the just... practice, right? Yeah, yeah okay. there's reasons for it, but yeah, right. yeah, there's reasons. There, there's reasons. There's excuses, maybe even, um, <laughs> but they don't look as strong as some of the other regions right now. So what I don't I, see them compete for much. What I will say is, if we look at the last couple years, the teams that they've been sending have been inconsistent, even in their own region. But now hmm. we're seeing, and it's only two events, we'll see how this third one goes, but now we're seeing power kind of solidify themselves like, hey, we yeah. are this team that's consistently uh, performing and, and, and topping the region. So maybe I like maybe the there's some hope. Yeah, <laughs> a little hopium there, but... I, I will say, Banana has always been the best performing player from OC at Lands, basically since he started playing. Even when his team wasn't playing well, he always played well. So him and, him and, uh, and Fever have usually been one-two in terms of how good... Each, each, like, the two best OC performers. So I'm, I'm excited to see, but I'll wait and see. I don't think I'm going to put any money on Yeah, that. yeah, same, same, same. Come on, OCE, we're, we're pulling for you. We believe you can do it. But that, um, fellas, I think that's going to conclude episode four of the Shift Cast. Y'all get inside the Shift Core. We got a link down here in the description. Drop your takes. We might pull your take onto the, uh, the Shift Cast as well. Thank you all for joining us for another episode, and we will catch you next week.